Hello and welcome to Community Day with uh, Run Diffusion, myself, Revolved, and Pixel Pirate. Hello, and, hello. Yeah, we're going to go over a few things. We're, we're dual streaming in Discord and YouTube and Twitch. So um, wherever you're watching us, uh, glad to have you with us. You can comment as well. And we will pick those up, try to get the answers to your questions. So. Um, so yeah, we want to make this an open space, a forum for people who can ask their questions and um, talk about what they're learning in Stable Diffusion or what they want to learn in Automatic 11.11 or Invoke or whatever. Um, other systems, we do have plans for other systems, but at the moment, uh, Automatic and Invoke. And so, um, yeah, I thought we would do a couple things. Um, one, I'm going to start off talking a little bit about some new learnings in embeddings uh, and training embeddings, and then uh, Pixel Pirate's going to take things off, do some some prompting, and we will have some giveaways uh, as well throughout the stream. So um, so stay tuned. Let me um, let me share my screen here, and if someone could just go check YouTube. Twitch, just make sure we sound good out there. I'm just getting to YouTube right now. There we go. Everyone can see my screen. And I'll share my screen here. All right. YouTube's good. Cool. So uh, we've boot up, we booted up a large here. And let me just uh, make sure. Awesome. Thanks, Rox. We booted up a large here. But you can really do this with a medium. You can do it with anything. Um, so uh, we just, of course, wanted the nice, prompt, snappy, large server for uh, the stream. Um, with embeddings, I actually came across this embedding recent or this idea for embedding recently on vacation, and I kind of wanted to share it. I posted it yesterday in the chat, um, but basically it was um, off of based off of like a rock uh, that I saw. This is it. It's just I'm just talking about a rock I saw on vacation. <laughs> um, <laughs> here's the embedding. So um, the rocks that I saw were actually uh, sandstone that had been formed from volcanic um, eruption. And um, they had this like strange sort of uh, look to them. So let me show you what they looked like. So when I saw these, I, was, I just took a bunch of pictures with my iPhone, very simple. And uh, whoop, not vids, I'm so used to doing video. Where are we? Moon rocks, there we go. So this is kind of what the rocks looked like. And yeah, I was just like, wow, these are really cool. You got my my leg shadow in there. Like, it doesn't matter. I'm just taking some cool pictures here. Um, those are really cool. Yeah. Now, I can't share where this was because I've been sworn to secrecy by the guardians of this place. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. The, the place that I was at, like, my friends live on the beach right next to it. And it got posted on Instagram and people just flooded into it. Like it yeah, was that'll happen. Yeah. So like the beach in front of their house just got like overwhelmed with with foot traffic and stuff. So they've kind of kind of locked it off now. But uh, I got to take a tour on it. See, so you, you see, we got like lichen on the rocks. We've got all kinds of different shapes. I've sort of got this like weird sort of bubbly sort of rock. And then I've also got some more like smooth textures in there as well. Um, and even just some like random stuff like this, where it's just like the texture and a line. Um, and uh, and yeah, decided to make an embedding out of it. So I took like, what is that? 10, 11 photos, something like that. 12, 16, you know, 19. Somewhere around there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, 19 photos and decided to make this out of it. And you can see here, it got some really cool results. This is like a tower, um, looks like a sundial kind of thing. I was prompting cities. This is more like 
uh, fashion. So you can see in the prompt here, I've got like um, Geiger, Dali, Paul Gautier doing some real fashion uh, stuff here. Got some cool results with it though. I love these like um, accent elements to it, which are really neat. Um, here we got some like ancient ruins. And this is just like oh, a wow. strange like bone structure. So the beauty of this is, you know, this is just like something I was inspired by in nature. I took a bunch of photos. I take it back, you know, train it. An hour later, I've got something that I can use in my art forever. And it's incredibly powerful and can really change things. One of the neat things about this is the way that textual inversion or embedding works is it actually interacts with the um, the kind of like the prompt sort of area is how I would describe it. It's basically pointing to an area in the diffusion model. And so with this one, the rock actually makes like different things pop out in the model. So um, for example, you get a lot more like ruins, you get a lot more buildings, you get a lot more strange rocks and landscapes. And so this one will tend to be in the background, but it can also really pop up front where like here where you've got it, um, you know, changing the costume and making it almost look more like butterfly-esque or, you know, there's different elements. And that's the, one of the beautiful things about embeddings is it's sort of unpredictable. When you've got a Laura or something and you know, like, okay, the style's going to come through like this, the object's going to come through like this, you train a model, you're like, okay, now the object is going to be in the foreground, and it's going to have this element. The embedding is a lot more unpredictable. And I really like that. So the, the way that they designed embeddings is that you have a small amount of a small data set. You can even do these on like one or two photos if you wanted. The small data set then points to this area in the diffusion model and can really make uh, almost like a mini training um, using that area in the diffusion model and the trained image. And so it can train very, very quickly, can be very simple, um, and you don't use a large data set. If you need a larger data set, you've got a lot of images. I would not recommend embeddings. I would recommend something else um, that'll reproduce it more easily. So it's kind of like a hack, this technology, but it's really cool. I personally like to use it for textures, styles, um, things where I'm not too concerned about uh, reproducing an object 100%. So I'm just using it as like an artistic kind of paint in my prompt palette, and that works really well for me. Um, I have seen some people who have done like celebrities and different stuff with embeddings. I just feel it doesn't work that well. And if you're going to do a celebrity, you might as well do a Laura. Um, versus an embedding, uh, the Laura will kind of reproduce things. Pixel, you've you've kind of played around with both of these. What are your thoughts? Um, my thoughts. Um, so I actually haven't tried uh, the Lotus Rocks yet, um, but the but are you just speaking generally in textual embed uh, inversions and embeddings? Yeah, 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 hundred um, percent. So I have a huge list. Let me just get to it here. Um, I have a big list of Lauras. Um, a lot of them I have from different styles from, you know, from buildings to anime characters to just places, peoples and everything in between. Um, but it's just that little thing that my biggest thing I like doing is going to Savati um, or Civit AI, however you want to call it, um, and looking through the new. So it's always cool to get like the really good stuff that has a lot of votes and all this kind of stuff. But I found looking through the new, um, just on Civit AI, uh, just on the main page, you can search by new. Um, and it shows, obviously, the newest stuff loaded up. And you find some really interesting things that not all of them always get voted up to be in the highest rated, which is the mm -hmm. um, kind of the, as soon as you load up Civit AI, that's what it's on. It's on highest rated. Um, so you don't always get to see those new uh, loaded items. And there is a lot of cool stuff that can be loaded in. Um, and also, Revol, do you want to talk about what we are planning, um, if we can talk about that for the free servers as well, uh, regarding Laura's? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we will be um, loading up some embeddings and Laura's into the shared service. So you'll see that you won't need Creators Club to use those. We're going to do a lot of, like, easy negative. We're going to do, like, you know, um, 
add detail, just some like some things that are like pretty basic and normal. We'll have some fun ones in there too. But the idea is to give you um, the tools that you need to make great prompts, great images. Um, you know, so things like bad artists, bad prompt, bad hands will be in there. Um, we have to check all of these to make sure that they um, they have the right uh, generation license. So for example, this one has, you know, you can't sell this model that I made. That was the permission that I gave. Here's add more detail. And they have the same, you know, one here. But some of them will have um, basically like uh, there'll be a paintbrush and it says no generation service. So for those ones, um, you won't be able to put those on the shared service. That's kind of our rule is um, for some models, we can put them on there. They've licensed them freely to be used. Some of them just say, nope, can't put on a generation service. So we just don't put those on the shared. Um, because you're renting your own hardware with Creators Club, you have your own storage, your own system, you can load whatever you want on there. Um, it's not a generation service, it's private to you, right? So that's up to you for what you load onto there. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's get some some prompting. Let's try this out. Um, I do want to talk about how I made this as well. Um, so there's uh, this guide that I saw, which I'll post. And basically, this guide I compared side to side um, with, and it's quite long. But um, the important part is down here. There's like, uh, where is it? Settings. Well, it goes through every single setting. So <laughs> um, should be pretty, pretty simple. It talks about preparing your data, going through. The really important thing is this here, which is the learning rate. So I actually compared this and I can show you an XY grid um, where I compared the two different models. Let's see. So this was just a general um, comparison grid for one of the models I made. Hold on, I'll get a bit of a better one. That's strength. This is the first grid I did. And you can see here, it looks like 3000's got the best, but you have to remember that this is the same seed. So when going through, you really wanna find Looks like I didn't save one of the grids. I should have it in here. Uh, auto 11 images, grids. So I think it was this one. Well, I won't, I won't go into that now. But basically, okay. um, you know, the the comparison between the two was was pretty pretty sharp. I mean, this here you can see like kind of the difference of when it like is trained, right? It kind of solidifies around this. It's got convergence and it reproduces like a similar one every time. And nice thing about embeddings is it's kind of hard to overtrain them. I find um, these, you know, are under trained. You can see that there's some like just weird sort of texturing going on, but then here you can see it's really kind of solidified and getting like a great response out of it. Um, the main thing is when you go into train these, it gives you like crazy settings, like max steps, a hundred thousand, you need like 5,000. So, um, don't worry about train. Like, it looks like if you just train it on a hundred thousand, you're like, oh my gosh, we've got nine hours to train this thing. Right No, uh, it trains super fast. And if you use this, um, you will see that it trains a lot faster. Um, this is like going through the number of steps. So it's changing the learning rate based on the step. So it's almost like deforum scheduling. Um, but uh, again, you don't need to know like really why it's working. You just pop this into here. And the other big thing from there is using deterministic. So when I compared them side to side, it was like not even close. Like it was wildly different. Um, I was really, really impressed with how um, it all turned out with the uh, the method that was on Reddit there. It was just like night and day. So if you're training and embedding, I would highly recommend this and deterministic. And um, 
Yeah, it was great. That's awesome. Thank you very much for sharing that, Revolt. Yeah, and um, I will just prompt a few of these. Let's just like kind of take a quick look at some. Um, I had some cool images that I had before that I'd love to like kind of go over just so people can see and we can try generating some more. Let's use one of the models here. Um, so we can you know, load one of these up and see what we get. And yeah, does anyone have any questions about training embeddings or anything? I know that there's been some questions about like prompting. Um, so I want to make sure that I show people some of the prompting. But uh, do you, anyone else have any questions about training? So um, I will answer one question about, about trigger words or prompting. So they are very necessary, um, and especially with embeddings and LoRa's. So with embeddings and LoRa's, they're a little bit different um, in how they're brought in. And so I try to keep the, well, in, the, in this case, with, with LoRa's and embeddings, it's just the name <clears throat> of it. It's the file name. So unlike a model where you can have like a lot of different trigger words, this is just the name and that's what brings it in. Um, trigger words can be used as well for LoRa's, <clears throat> but, um, you know, that, that's when you train multiple concepts into a model. So that's the reason why, oh my God, what just happened here? Let's see. Only when live, huh? You have no problem with it until it's live. <laughs> that's part of the gig. Yep, just needed a refresh for some reason. All right. Um, so uh, trigger words, yes. So when you're training, I'll show you, oh, I can't show you on this one, but um, with Dream Booth, uh, it lets you train multiple concepts in. So if I had like the rocks, but I also wanted to do trees and waves, those would be different concepts. I do that in Allura. And then you would have to use that specific trigger for those different concepts. It is cumbersome. You could just have like a bunch of different models, but people like to have these big comprehensive models. Um, there is that Civitai extension for finding the trigger words. That's one way. I just keep Civitai open and will, um, look up the things that I'm using. Um, but with embeddings in particular and most LoRa's, you don't need trigger words at all. So I don't generally use them unless I'm having trouble getting it to reproduce in if the I can, image. Yeah. If I can just jump in here for one second. Um, so that is a great option as well. One thing that I find that I do uh, for all my LoRa's is I actually save the trigger words as a prompt style um, as the name of the LoRa. So whenever I pull up Alora, I go into the Styles drop-down menu underneath the Generate button, and I click the name of the Alora, and then it brings in the trigger words. Yeah, that's a great idea. You can do like a little prep work um, to really make it make it happen. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, let's uh, let's see here. I can try another. <laughs> Another picture here. I had some really fun ones that I was doing with um, with the space theme the other day. So what I'll do is I'll pop over to um, ping info and I can grab the prompt. Now this one I was using a bunch of different uh, LoRa's and different things. So let's just keep it simple. I won't use all those LoRa's. And I will take out, that's just a cool Laura though, Tang Bohu line, highly recommended, especially if you're doing any anime stuff. It's nice. great. Um, so Lotus Rocks, I've done some waiting on it to really make it come out. We'll use, we'll do that. And we'll do, call me a determined. And let's just see what we get here. Uh, easy negative. So this will be one that will be in the shared servers, easy negative. Dogs in space, we could, we could do a dog here, but let's just start with this. DPM 2 Karis, I've been using it more. I kind of like it. Um, we're gonna go 35, 
anyways. Sorry, right? the, the dogs in space was for later on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> um, and yeah, let's just prompt six of them. I like to do multiples of three. Uh, we will make sure to do now. Again, we don't we don't really want people doing not safe for work. We understand art has it, but uh, you know we're not a porn service by any means. So you know we don't want people doing that. Um, just to keep in mind, had a question about that today. All right, so we got some stuff going along here. See what we got. And this is Rendiffusion. Um, I believe it's FX photorealistic. Got some great results. Awesome. And uh, could probably do just a little in painting if we really wanted to make any of these shine, like redo some of the faces. Um, would be very simple to make this into like a high resolution wallpaper, could outpaint with it. Um, there's just, I love how many options there are in, uh, in creating with this. So we got a visor. One of our users was like obsessed with getting visors and, uh, there was no good model that would have the visor down. Every model was trained where the visor was up. Oh. So, uh, so we've actually got some good visors here. I can see cool. Tra trained some, some visors. Awesome. <laughs> I wonder if we could actually put that in there. See like, uh. Orange visor. Let's see what we get. Cool. Let me just check for comments on YouTube. Yeah, it's a little cumbersome to look up specific triggers for models. Um, it's just the way that the tech works. Um, oh, sweet shades. So uh, I expect it to improve, you know, um, but uh, it is what it is. Nice. Yeah, I liked uh, this one in particular. Looked cool. This one's got like a baseball hat kind of kind of thing going on. They look kind of nice. like the, the scout from Team Fortress. Yeah, <laughs> that's going that's back. A, that's a good visor. But we're not really getting the the moon rocks. I feel on this one. So um, maybe we just try like a little different model. This is the thing too that I find with um, with uh, embeddings is they work better with some models or not. Um, so you can you'll find that sometimes when you do an embedding, um, the object, like in this case the person, will just not appear at all, and it will just be the embedding in the background, and so. Um, you just kind of have to mess around with the settings with different models to find ones that are really responsive. It's kind of like a weird alchemy, finding out what works. Um, you'll see that some of them, you know, maybe this space adventure is not the right subject. If I want to bring out the moon rocks, I don't just need to prompt it, but I also need to have a subject where it's calling that part of the diffusion model, right? So like actually need to have some rocks or something. So let's try this out see what we get. I got another question here from YouTube. You can create a text doc with a trigger word inside that doc with the exact name of the Laura. This will make the trigger word appear with your preview image as text. Can this be done? I think that's just the same as styles, right? It's what they're talking about. Um, use this message on the local to stall. Kizzy me on, on YouTube. Um, good question. I think it's styles that you're talking about. If it's styles, then yes, you can do that on stable diffusion. So, um, which is what Pixel Pirate mentioned. So here we've got more of the anime version. Notice no visors now, <laughs> like the visor appeared as these rings on the planet. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're getting the, the moon rocks kind of thing in here. So maybe we'll, we'll even, uh, let's see, take out the orange visor. And we'll go not styles, they said. Make a text doc with a trigger word inside that doc with the exact name of the URL. This will make the trigger word appear with your preview image as text. Oh, I've never done that, Kizzy. Um, if you jump on the Discord, we can uh, we can give it a go. I'd be interested in trying that out. It sounds like a, a 
cool idea. I mean, this would appear on the preview. I use the ping info, so it's got the, the trigger words in there already if I've prompted them in, right? So um, ancient ruins, cathedral, uh, alien temple. We just got all, all the things in there. Let's see what it comes up with. We might have to uh, reduce, you know, our focus on the subject of this in order to bring out more of the background. There's this, always this balance. And if you think about how many tokens you have, that's kind of like how much you can spend in prompting on the image. If you find that the image is more focused on the subject, it's probably just because that model was trained on it, but it could also be from how you're prompting. It's a cool little world there some junk orbital debris. You got some of it coming up in there. Photorealistic maybe. Try uh, automatic on the VAE. Just try a few different things. I'm gonna move these up to here. I'll give it a go. Whoa, robot. I do love the unpredictability. Wow. I tend to like do, when I can, really large batches. And that's the area where um, the large server really excels. Because what I find is if you're just doing like one-off photos, changing things, like the large is probably not the best server for you. Um, you might want to like you jump down to a medium if you need the processing power or even a small. Um, but what I find is this model tends to do this too. It has these like planets and then everything looks giant on the planet. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, so I like the motorcycle, it's pretty cool. This robot's awesome. Love that robot. So yeah, um, I, I tend to do like very large batches with a large and that's where you really take advantage of the horsepower of the large um, because you'll get big speed increases when you do like a, a large, large number of uh, pictures. So let's do a few more. CFG, I'm gonna take out the photorealistic. It gave like a little bit of a texture to the photo, like a grain that is not needed in there. Um, we'll take out hyperrealism. And um, this. Alex surfaces is good. Take out cathedral. Okay. Whoa, impact frames asking some heavy questions. Awesome. I love it. Um, I can't answer you now. That's a, that's a lot of, a uh, lot of thinking, but um, I love the fact that you're developing a way to retrieve the embedding triggers. Um, that's awesome. I think it really needs to be done. I do feel like there's like something on the actual embeddings themselves. Like I feel like there's a usability question that maybe some machine learning person didn't really think about. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe when they like developed, uh, you know, the concept of textual inversion, they were not really thinking about how it would be used in an actual like automatic 11.11. I think like automatic 11.11 probably wasn't even out then, right? So um, I do think the tech will evolve um, so that trigger words are a little more obvious. Look at these giants talking over this little tiny temple. Like, okay, watch where you step. We don't want to step on any little aliens here. Um, be fun. This one's cool. I like the posing. Yeah, um, I do also want to show you this. So um, one of the things that we've noticed uh, it's a common problem with all automatic 1111. It happens locally, it happens on our service, it happens in other services. If you switch models a lot, um, you might notice prompt bleed. It's been talked about on Reddit a little bit um, where like, let's say that orange visor, and we can even probably look for it, you know, maybe that there's orange would show up in here. When it starts leaking, you know, you can see a little orange. Maybe that's from this, maybe not, but 
you know, different things will leak across prompts and you'll change the model and you'll be like, why does my image still look like the same? And so every little once in a while, if you go to settings and hit show all pages, come down here, unload checkpoint from VRAM and reload it back in. And you'll find that it kind of cleans up the prompting and you get like a fresh, um, fresh prompt. So I just find that that helps with the memory leak issues within automatic 1111 sometimes. Um, who knows, maybe it's placebo, but I've seen that. Um, all right, so let's, let's switch over. Um, we've got a few more images generating here, but uh, I just got a question on YouTube asking about the new models. So um, would be happy to go over those. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll be right here with you. So you're getting a little, little different results here. There's a temple. Um, but uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Let's look at these last images that we've got. I've got some cool temples coming in. Any other questions on embeddings? I'm happy to field them. Let me know. Very slight echo with Revolved. Oh, maybe my user volume is <laughs> not all the way off or something. Yeah, we could look at a really basic, let's just do that really quick, really basic prompt. We've got uh, this temple, whoa, cool. Super fun, love this ship. One of the things that's interesting is it will really like change the posing of things I find. So let's do a very simple prompt. and concept design. Here, we'll do this. Go down to six and give it a go. I do like using high res fix, but um, for the sake of time, I um, won't do a high res fix for now, but uh, I'll do generally like a high res fix with a low denoising. Here we can see some of it starting to pop up in the um, like these strange symbols. Yeah, maybe not the best model. You can, you know, again, try different models, try what what uh, you feel brings out the embedding best. All right, let's let's uh, let's switch things over. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen here. Get mine booted up. Okay, let me know when you're ready. It should be presenting now. Yes, you are on YouTube. I uh, should be, okay, perfect. Oh, and getting Discord now. Awesome. And let's uh, really talk about our new models as well. We got some people asking about it in YouTube. Um, so Run Diffusion, um, the two new models. Yep. Perfect. Uh, I just want to confirm that everyone can see my screen. YouTube was good. Discord were good. Yeah, there is a, a little echo I can hear myself. How am I? I mean, you sound great. Awesome. I think it's on Discord. Can you just check if I'm muted? I can hear you fine. No, it's it's like coming through your mic, I think. Oh, really? I'll try and move my mic away a little bit. Let me turn myself down. Here, I think I got it, actually. It was on your screen. OK. Yeah, I think we're good now. Perfect. Every OK, perfect. Uh, so today, everyone, welcome. Uh, we're going to be doing a fun little contest, uh, kind of a follow-along contest. What I'll mainly be focusing on is um, not just generating art, 
but also talking about prompting um, specifically with these two new models from Run Diffusion. So we have Run Diffusion uh, FX 2.5D, which is more of like a stylized, um, very diverse, um, more cartoonish than the photorealistic, um, and as well the RDFX photorealistic, uh, which is, no, it's right in the name. Um, both great models. Uh, both are very dynamic uh, with their prompts. Um, so you can do, you know, very short prompts, low sampling method, uh, or sorry, low sampling steps, low CFG, um, can produce some really amazing images. Um, but the more detailed you get in your prompt, um, you can also uh, bump out that CFG, CFG scale and really hone in on exactly what you're talking about within your prompt, and it does follow along uh, very quite nicely. So I'll kind of be starting at the beginning and then kind of working our way up um, as well. And I encourage everyone uh, to follow along with the models. We have those on the preloaded servers. Um, so even if you're not part of Creators Club, you have access to those. Um, it is the Run Diffusion FX 2.5D and Photorealistic. So right now, um, sorry if I didn't mention, um, please feel free to share your art uh, within the chat. I'd love to see uh, what you guys got going on. I know Level Bevels <laughs> already got one ready to go. Um, but right now, I'll be starting with the 2.5D. And uh, we had it from, who was it? I think it was Lokito, uh, Dogs in Space. So right now, we're just going to start off at, let's say, 25. Look at that, adorable. <laughs> Very nice level bevel. Uh, we're going to start off at 25 uh, sampling, uh, sampling steps and maybe 4.5 CFG. Uh, we're just going to start off with a beautiful husky in space. Right now, I am using Euler A uh, sampling method. Uh, some other good ones is the DPM plus plus 2M Keras um, and the SDE Keras as well. Revolve, have you had any experience with other sampling methods with these models? Oh. Can't hear revolved. Sorry, I was on mute doing some things. Yeah, uh, I haven't. Um, just the ones that you've mentioned, really. Is Beautiful. Yeah. Focus Beautiful. On. So you can see right here, um, to start off, obviously, we have some OK images um, from a very, very basic prompt, though. Um, but obviously, adding more details, we can kind of hone in um, and getting with those. So what I usually like to do starting off my prompts. Uh, this RD photorealistic. Oh, very nice level bubble, okay. Um, so what I like to start off is kind of uh, formatting my prompt. So I want a highly detailed uh, full shot portrait. Then we're gonna use break. So the way I use break, the way break I believe works, or at least it works for me this way, is I separate my prompts into three stages. So I have kind of the general overscope of what my prompt is. So what I want is a highly detailed full shot portrait. Um, after the break, we're gonna put in what I want in that portrait. So I'm gonna put a beautiful husky in space, um, maybe, Maybe we can put in fluffy, fluffy, I don't know, fluffy fur. Uh, break. So after we put in what I want out of the image, we're going to put another break and then add all the supporting details. So I want highly detailed again, highly accurate, maybe 8K. We'll see where that goes. Rocks, that is a cool image. That is awesome. Remember to uh, follow along uh, in the chat if you like any of these images. We can add the Run Diffusion uh, emoji there because um, there will be there will be prizes for ever, anyone who gets the most Run Diffusion um, emojis there. So you can see I just added them to both Level Bevels and Rocks right now, uh, but we can follow along with those. Nice, nice little uh, furry husky there. Does anyone have any suggestions about what they'd uh, kind of like to see in the image, what we could get out of it? Uh, 
Maybe uh, we could do like Rox has it in a spacesuit. We could put the husky yeah. in a spacesuit. 100%. Beautiful husky in a spacesuit. Now I'm just going to change just to get a more uh, portrait style. So right here, I just use the, in I don't know, maybe invert button to kind of switch my uh, width and height. Just get a more portrait style. <laughs> nice. You can see those are already turning out pretty well. Some very cool prompts here. Thanks for that idea, Rox. That's awesome. Negative prompts. Yes, honestly, thank you for bringing that up. Very, uh, very good. So the negative prompts, I'll be straight up recommended negative prompts for the RDF mo models. I don't know, uh, Revolve, if you have any recommended ones for these specific models, um, but I just kind of go with my normal um, normal negatives. I always start with easy negative, and I'm sorry that I did forget that. You go with easy negative. Um and then you can always add, you know, the things we don't want to see, obviously, distorted, blurry. Um, bad artists, I actually don't have that. Uh, I actually don't have any more embeddings installed right at the moment. Um, so I'll have to get on that. But we'll yeah. see. We, we did receive a, a question as well. So um, I yeah. don't have any recommended ones. I mean, it's just like any other model. You know, yeah. one, 1. 1.5, you don't have to get too crazy on the negative prompts. 2.1 models, you really do. But... Um, you can keep it pretty simple generally for 1.5. Keep in mind that it does like, you know, use a bit of toku. Yes, I know. I know my mic is uh, echoing here, unfortunately. Um, Pixel, I'm not sure if you have my user volume down or anything like that. Uh, let me double check. Yeah, I do have your user volume down right to zero on Discord. Okay. How about now? Is it better? Anyways, um, let me know in the in the chat. Um well, it's echoing, so I'll keep it short. Um, we had a question about break. You've got break in your prompt. Do you want to explain that? Oh, yep. So they may have just jumped in. Uh, yeah, I'll explain that again. So what break does is kind of separate the ideas of the prompts. So my very first um, highlighted section right here. So I have highly detailed full shot portrait. So that's telling stable diffusion. The very first thing, what my outline is, is a highly detailed full shot portrait. Then after the break, it's saying, okay, now we're going to switch. So now it's, what do I focus on now? So now I'm focusing on a beautiful husky in a spacesuit. Um, that's all I have in there right now. We're definitely going to add to that. Um, but then it's saying, okay, just focus on beautiful husky in a spacesuit. And then after the last break, it's going to be our supporting details. So it's after the portrait, after the spacesuit this is what I want the, the picture to be about. Highly detailed, highly accurate. Does it take the place of a comma or it's different than a comma? It's, this is a very great question. I have kind of researched this and, you know, looking on the internet, you get different answers from everything. So this is the kind of the way that I've found that it works the most. I use commas, as you can see, I do use commas. Um, within its own subsection um, to separate ideas. So highly detailed, comma, highly accurate, comma, 8K. Um, but I find the break really helps to separate the, in my mind, what I've found to be the best in stable diffusion is kind of three separate um, ideas. So kind of the main overview of the picture, what's in the picture, and then the supporting details of the picture. And again, that's just me. Um, I'm not, you know, an expert. I didn't write the program, anything like that. This is just what I found by using the program for many, many hours. Um, what works best for me. Okay. And I, I guess it's sort of similar to how you could like group, uh, prompts with the brackets, right? It's like sort of. Yeah. hundred percent. So you, uh, are you would, talking that about that would actually weight it. Sorry. Yeah. So that would weight it differently, but it's, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I do have, uh, I haven't added any weights in here. So one thing you can do is you can go through, use the mouse, click and drag, and then use control up, uh, up arrow. And you can weight it. Mm -hmm. um, or what you can do is after you've done the prompt, let's say we want to highlight highly detailed, you can hit control and shift, left arrow, left arrow, um, goes word by word, and then just click up. And you can... Uh, add emphasis very, very quickly. Nice.
good one. All right, I'll leave you to it. No problem. Okay, so we're just gonna, it seems like we had lost uh, the spacesuit uh, when we added the easy negative. So I'm just gonna try adding some emphasis here um, and see if we can kind of get that back. Again, what uh, Revolved mentioned earlier, um, Stable Diffusion 1.5 really doesn't require a ton of negatives. Um, doesn't really require a ton of negatives. It can do really well uh, without it, but it's all it's all trial and error. Um, the way kind of we started today was just starting with a very simple, you know, dog in space, adding, adding, and adding. That's what I would generally like to do with my negative prompts as well. You know, generate the photo. What do we have? Okay, what's in there that I don't want? Okay, add that to the negative, and just keep generating and and generating. So a little bit, uh, yeah, we seem to kind of lost that. So I'm just going to go back away, see if we can get back to what we had without the weight. Uh, I guess I'll ask something. I've been thinking of astronaut, beautiful portrait of space, highly detailed, better, different. So I'm just reading a comment from Discord right now. Sorry, Level, give me one second here. Okay, I will get back to that in a second, Level, okay? Sorry about that. Just trying to get, we did have a really uh, kind of beautiful portrait there at the beginning here. Let's see if we can get that back. Does anyone else have anything in the chat? Uh, anyone been generating any dogs in space? Working on it. Okay, Paul. That's awesome. Can't wait to see it. I think we can bump up uh, the CFG scale a little bit. We're only at 4.5, so that's really leaving a lot of the outcome up to stable diffusion. So let's see if we just bump it up to 7.5, see if we can get a little bit more. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. Very good catch. I had uh, a specific seed in there from when we started. So that's probably where all my issues are coming from. Lokito, very good eye. So we just changed that to negative one, which is completely random um, each time you generate for a different seed. Okay, so we're sort of getting away. Um, I'm going to switch over to uh, the photorealistic and give that a shot with our prompt. See what we get out of that. Maybe make it 512 instead of 480 and 832, 960. Yeah, I can do that. Eight thirty two by five twelve, you say? Yeah, I found I found that uh, these two models, you can really push uh, the width and the height. Um, you know, I, we did just see some doubles there, but I found usually I find for widescreen uh, 854 by 480, uh, which is a basically a three times upscale to 2560 by 1440, which is my monitor size um, without without any real major doubling. So it could have been part of the prompt is what we're working on. Okay, just wait for this to load up. Very excited to see what you guys got uh, kind of brewing in the pot there. Yeah, that is a good idea as well. That also helps with generation speed too. All right, highly detailed, we'll add in highly accurate again. There we go. Getting back to some good images here. Nice one, little smile. I really like the kind of patterns he's got up in his fur there. Really cool image. Blow these up so you can see them. Really nice eyes too as well. Kind of really detailed circular pupils, looking good. 
Another one, little dog floating above uh, Earth in a space chute, a little backpack he's got going on there. Pretty cool. Um, so what other, uh, any comments, uh, either on YouTube or on Discord, what we could add to this image? Maybe a space helmet? Yeah, I think so too. Uh, level bubble, good comment. I think in this case, photo reel is doing better. 100%. Very uh, kind of uh, confident look he's got going up there. Looks like a portrait that he's about to fly off into space. <laughs> Very cool. So it did see, you notice how most of this image right now um, is about the space helmet. Um, because we've only added weight to the space helmet. So if I lower this to 1.1, it was at 1.2 and the only thing weighted, it put a lot of emphasis on the space helmet. So if we lower that to 1.1, very cool, Paul. That's awesome. Still a little bit, a little bit less in the second picture, a little bit more of the spacesuit that we lowered the emphasis. But let's uh, let's add some emphasis to the actual dog in the spacesuit. Take that up to three, and we're just going to emphasize the full shot portrait to see if we can kind of get a, like a full body shot. Alan, very cool as well. Looks like he's coming out of uh, a chamber ready to go into space. Now there are some good, good images here, getting a little bit... No, we're still kind of on the space helmet. Take that away to one. Very cool images in the Discord there. What about changing the prompt? What about uh, the dog doing something else? What about a highly detailed uh, scenery? Take away the middle prompt of what we want in the image. Beautiful husky walking on planet. And we haven't touched much of the sampling steps and the CFG as well. Uh, so after I get uh, an image here, we'll start to play with that and see where that goes. So you notice how I put on planet. So kind of stable diffusion doesn't really um, take that for another planet or whatever. It kind of takes that where it looks like we're kind of on Earth right here. But again, very, very cool images. Uh, walking on a lost planet. And then we're going to bump up our CFG scale a little bit. Let's go to 9.5. Um, so basically what the CFG scale is doing is that the further up we go, um, the more it's going to hone in on my actual text prompt um, rather than the creativity of stable diffusion. Okito, very cool. I love the uh, lime green glowing spacesuit. Very cool. Get these images popped up here. Still kind of the same, but you can see we're really lacking uh, some details, especially in the face. Um, face there. So maybe we'll add highly detailed. We'll add some weight to that. Highly accurate. Now let's go with uh, perfect face. I don't know if perfect face is going to end up pulling in uh, possibly some human uh, faces or not, but we can try it and we'll see what happens. Nope. Looking good. Little, not too much, a little bit better, a little bit better in the eyes there. Still not great. Perfect face. 
What about perfect eyes? Maybe planet Mars, Jupiter, add NASA. Very good. Let's do that. Walking on Mars. Add some weight to that as well, because this is kind of the main portion of our prompt. We definitely want that weighted accordingly. Just going to bump up the steps to 30. Uh, snow, yeah, we can add snow into the negative prompt. Doesn't look like we got too much here, but very cool. So we kind of got uh, kind of Marsy style uh, background there. This one's really cool. We got the planet up in the top left hand corner, uh, the ground looking more or less uh, kind of Mars. Highly detailed. I'm just going to go with, uh, let's do vast landscape. And I'm going to bump up my favorite, my kind of go-to CFG skill is 11.5. No real reason why. It's just what I found works best for me. I'm going to get these blown up. Not looking too bad. Dog kind of uh, turned a little bit more purple. You got a big planet in the background there, but definitely losing detail uh, within the husky itself. Yabas. Very cool. I'm going to add uh, easy negative back inks. We kind of had that uh, messed up when we had that uh, seed in there. How are we doing for time there revolves? Oh, I think you got your muted. Uh yeah, I was on Discord mute. <laughs> I was gonna say we should uh, we should give away some prizes. We're doing pretty yeah. good, but we should probably 100%. wrap it up and give us some prizes soon. Yeah. So uh, just to mention in the chat, um, anyone in the in our Discord chat right now, we've had some lovely images. Um, so I encourage everyone that is listening in on the Discord um, to scroll up through, and I'll post uh, the Run Diffusion emoji. Um, we're going to use to count the votes. So if any, everyone can go vote on their favorite images. Um, with that, we will be using those um, to do prizes. I kind of mentioned earlier in the chat, uh, but we will be doing the top three um, best images. So everyone get your images in there and um, be friendly. Let's vote and have some fun. I'm going to try out, um, just as we're kind of wrapping up here, I'm going to try out a little bit um, simpler prompt for the photorealistics. We never uh, did that. So I'm just going to do Husky walking on Mars, uh, comma, wearing a spacesuit. See what we kind of get with that. Very cool images. Rocks, very nice. Nokito, awesome. Love the lime green. Very cool images here. We kind of stepped away um, kind of from the detailed portrait, uh, right kind of the dog up in the camera, and got it a little bit more. We've got an astronaut standing in the back there. Very cool. There's definitely a lot we can add, obviously, to these prompts. This is a very simple, you know, eight-word prompt. Um, so we are kind of lacking some detail, obviously, in the face, and the dog kind of got some kind of messed up legs in there, but we can obviously always correct that by honing in on our prompt. Uh, and this is for anyone uh, really looking at the details here, 11.5 CFG for an eight word prompt is very, very high um, as well. So usually if you're working with a very simple prompt, um, you wanna go with that with a small CFG scale as well. Cool, we got a dog walking in a spacesuit. Awesome. 
Very cool. These are looking good. I really love this last image. This is very cool. I like that. Kind of reminds me from uh, that one guy from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Can't remember the name, but it was very cool. Awesome. So I think uh, we'll just wait a few minutes here to finish up uh, the voting. So if everyone get their votes in for the chats, but I think as far as the stream goes, um, we'll probably wrap her up here in a minute. Tony Revolt. Yeah. Really appreciate, uh, obviously, everyone joining today. I do want to mention for anyone listening, um, again, the two models that we were using today were Runda Fusion FX uh, 2.5D and the photorealistic models, which are available on Runda Fusion servers uh, for Creators Club and non Creators Club members. You're welcome, Level Bubble. Thank you. We appreciate it. We appreciate uh, everyone coming today. And I uh, hope you guys had fun. Um, stay in the chat. We will reach out um, after the stream is done. We will reach out uh, via DM for the top uh, voted images. Yeah, awesome. I'm going to uh, shut down the YouTube side of it. So you'll have to put my user volume back on there. <laughs> okay, yep. Thanks, everyone on the YouTube and Twitch.